Come in. <laughs> Luke is here. Ross. What's you up, good? brother? Yeah, I'm good, bro. What's up? Bro, what's yeah. going on, brother? Super, super. Yeah, man. Long time. Yep. So what have you guys been up to, man? <laughs> Too much to talk about. Paying <laughs> <laughs> taxes. Yeah, I'm paying taxes, man. <laughs> man. Taxes. Hey. taxes here. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah. So uh well let's talk to the people with the rest. What's up, man? What uh what have you been up to? Oh man, it, it's I've been a uh, up and about yeah uh, we've been doing some post um we've been sh uh, filming a bit doing post a bit right. so it's kind of been a good balance usually okay. we film 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 and then just sit down and edit but this time we've been filming and editing and, and edit at the same time yeah it's been good um <clears throat> we are actually we've been filming the last episodes of uh, homecoming right uh so we we are on episode 11. We're filming episode 12 this week. And Excellent. And a wrap of uh, three seasons of Homecoming. Okay, but the Homecoming, so tell, tell us what, what's what's it about? Is it a docu or is it a series? Uh, what is so it? it's a, uh, Homecoming is a short docu series mm -hmm. of um, the profiles, young, enterprising African youth from the diaspora. Right. So young people that used to be in the West or East they used to be outside of the continent that right. have moved back to the continent and who are doing interesting stuff here now, interesting, nice. impactful stuff here. So, so yeah, we've, we've had, it's, it, it airs on DW, Deutsche Welle. Mm -hmm. So we've been shooting for the last three years. We have three seasons and this is the last one. So we are, we're excited uh, that that's now coming to an end. Excellent. Uh, so you're closing the chapter closing uh, the this chapter. this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Great. What what about you, Robert? What's going on, man? I know now you are you a noob master <laughs> in the making. <laughs> right? Trying to build that muscle and uh trying to just see how that space looks like. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, so I work a lot with the with the Russell. Right. Yes. Actually <laughs> we we we've, we've been uh filming together so this uh, where bit of last year and this mm. year been to uh Ghana, Sierra Leone, right. Botswana. So yeah we, we mm. it's kinda like my uh partner my sister. Okay. It's all right. So let, let's uh yeah don't you don't go easy with the with the <laughs> partner stuff. These people might misinterpret oh, that. Nah. <laughs> it ain't like that. <laughs> Specific professional yeah, business partners, all right? It's not that kind of partnership, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, so let, let's backtrack a little bit. So you guys are part of a collective, right? It's uh top yes. creatives. Mm. Okay, yes. this is your production company, right? Yes. So, uh, what what are your roles respectively? What do you guys do in the company actually? So I'm the producer, mm -hmm. and uh, Robert is director uh, and cinematographer. 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 So I'm the person most of the time behind the cameras, mm -hmm. uh, filming, shooting, and doing a bit of edit depends on uh, the work on the you project, want. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, that, that's pretty good. So, uh, how long you guys? How long has this uh, endeavor been together? A couple of years now, I guess. More than that. Mm, yeah. I, I guess. I guess so, like two or two, three. Three years. Three, three years. years. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Robert also has his own uh, production company as well, mm -hmm. Lamu yeah. Films. So, yeah. It's, it's funny how we merged with us. You know what happened is. Uh, Russ was looking for someone to shoot a, a project, and that's how we connected. That was the genesis between me and Russ, and uh, we just came together, right. did, a, uh, did a project, and then we, we saw like we have so many things in common. There's um, a certain style that Russ uh, likes, the right. way I like to do projects, and that kind of partnership, like we can be able to do more, not only just those uh, commission projects. So that's how we came together and ever nice. since now we've we've done so much we've done projects others are still not yet out but we keep on so the the fact that uh, he has the tap going have to film going doesn't doesn't break doesn't interfere yeah, it doesn't with, interfere uh, with the work it right doesn't at all well that's good i think you know those uh, such collaborations sometimes can uh, blossom into something a lot bigger where uh, you know, uh, you see uh, a lot of the collaboration that blossom into a full-fledged production yeah. uh, 
powerhouse. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you guys have been at it for three years now. You've been to Ghana, Sierra Leone, uh, where else? Botswana. Botswana. Mm -hmm. So all these to shoot different uh, interesting yeah. projects. I mean, it's great to see, you know, to see different parts of the continent and then, you know, gather uh, in interesting stories and then to yeah. tell them uh, through the lens of, you know, both of you as cinematographer, as producer, mm -hmm. I'm sure he's usually on your case, hey, you got it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and also a good thing, you know, Russ doesn't know how to cook, so most of the time when you're out, uh, hey. you need to take of him. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Wow. So, you're, so you're the chef. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, directors, they have to control everything. <laughs> they have a controlling... Uh, you will right. starve when you're with Russ outside yeah. uh, the boundaries of Kenya. Really, I guess uh, Raz and I, we, we share similar uh, proclivities. Mm -hmm. When we're on set, we rarely eat, and yeah. oh, it's got to be something specific. It's like, no, 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 keep a salad for me, or... <laughs> eat when you're done. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> see, for me, I, I don't know, maybe it's to a fault, mm -hmm. but usually I like my crew to, to be fed first yeah, before I eat. I want to make sure, did you eat, or did you get, you know, I want to make sure everybody's okay. Yeah before I actually, because a lot of guys are selfish, they'll just go, eh, just yeah, give me the best, yeah, the mm -hmm. biggest piece of chicken, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like your dad used to used to do, like, hey, you, a leg, yeah, yeah <laughs> give me the leg, I'm, yeah. I'm the father, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think it's, uh, again, I think it's a great partnership, because mm -hmm. there's also, you know, yin and yang, right? Because mm -hmm. if you all, if you both had the same sort of like personality, yeah. most, most often yeah. you'll, cl you'll clash. But yeah. now, because there's a bit of a, you know, a divide, well, not really a divide, but a, a, a difference, mm -hmm. you kind of complement each other where, you know, you know your role, you're a producer, you're more behind the camera, you know, doing the, the, the basically the grunt work where he's like, hey, we don't have the money for a helicopter yeah. shot, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Keep it simple. Yeah. Exactly. Keep it rolling. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a gimbal. Use so, uh, <laughs> sticks. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So cool. Um, so what what else is uh, what else is going on besides uh, the uh, the um, the series that's coming to an end this year on uh, DW? Mm -hmm. What else is in the in the pipeline? Oh, in terms of projects. Oh, in terms of projects. Mm -hmm. So we are. I don't know. So we are actually in the process of. Um, submitting a few stories for this season's version of uh, Africa Direct on Al Jazeera, yes. which, we, which we've had the pleasure of producing a few stories in the past. Um, we uh, we have our own uh, short and feature films that we've been writing, mm -hmm. as they do. One of our other creative partners right. has been writing. RISPA has a story that's ready for production in the fall. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so we, we, are, we are looking forward to spending a, a big chunk of the second half of the season uh, working on our own creative ideas and also really continuing to push our, the quality of our work, the quality of the stories we tell. Right. Um, sometimes as a storyteller you feel like, okay, I've told these stories, I've told those other stories, mm -hmm. I've been on this platform, I've been on that platform, what's next? Yeah. So uh, we're, we're spending a lot of time thinking through that now. Right. Robert has been working on some, he's been going to school and learning, <laughs> learning some yes. new nukes. <laughs> the, uh, the nuke master in the making, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think that's awesome because, uh, you know, to, to segue into, into the conversation, like, you getting involved into you know 3d compositing and you know learning the proper because the demand is there mm -hmm. now to be able to take what you see through you know through the lens mm -hmm. and then now recreate it in 3d space in the 3d environment and to understand because you already understand focal length yeah you know you understand camera movement you know i mean aperture and you know shades and mm -hmm. you know what i mean uh, roll offs whether it's uh you know, I mean, uh, color science, you know, how, how the shadow should fall, you know, uh, depth of feel and all that. So you're already one step ahead because you already understand the, the, the language of, yeah. you know, I've been mean, putting things in an environment and make it make sense. Yeah. So now what, what, are your, what are your main challenges when it comes to uh, trying to transition into the 3D space? You know, first of all, I'm coming from a layer-based system like Premiere, right. you know, After, after effects. effects. Those are layer-based. 
when it comes to New York, this is a node base. Node base. Yeah. Like DaVinci so Resolve. A, yes. And, uh, you see, no, so the entire, the entire system is different. You're working, the other side you're working with the layers, and this side you're working with nodes. So trying to learn what each one does. Right. So you're trying to merge and, uh, you know, what needs to come before and after. It's not really a huge thing because um, even in layers, you, you know, the, the top layer is the one that uh, That's right. is like on, on, the, on the top. That's on the top. And then also yeah. you can play with opacities and yes, different yes, yes. things, different blend modes. Yeah. Right. On, the only uh, uh, the future lens because you now sometimes you don't know the names of the node. Yeah. So when you want to, apart from margin and you want to do something, you have to know what kind of a node does that thing. Right. So that you can either key it in or try and, 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 and get that to work. But interestingly, the reason actually I just, um, not even shifting, but I felt like there's this um, space or gap in um, compositing. Mm -hmm. As well, we have, we have been having a chat with Russ and saying like, what is it missing in our films? Right. You know, when you, when you watch uh, Kenyan films or African mm -hmm. films, it is, I think, correct or 80%, close to 90% of our films are very dialogue based. They are very, you know, we don't, um, it's very hard to shoot an exterior or to shoot things that uh, incorporate fires, accidents, those chase scenes, you know? Yeah. So we play them safe. So what we'll do in our scripts, we write them and make them into a dialogue mm -hmm. because it's easy to shoot that. Absolutely. And uh, what you cannot be able to feel, we are going to explain it <laughs> and assume you get the gist and then continue with that. The film. Right. But I want to change that. Wanna Absolutely, try because uh, the, the, the basis of cinema is like show. Show, yeah. Don't tell. Don't, don't tell. tell. Show me. If you can't, please show me. Don't tell me what happened. Show right. me what happened mm -hmm. instead of telling. And that's, I feel that's the that's the difference between us and the Hollywood kind of films or those films that um, you can say they are very engaging because they take you from different levels of emotions, you know. They, they have subtle, they have, they have scenes that are really, you know, your adrenaline just uh, rises. You, they have these chase scenes that you, you, you know, you're so glued, you want yeah. to know what will happen. Absolutely. From one, you know it's a lie, but it's just cool to watch. You know? It's riveting because, yes. uh, and then you also, as a cinematographer, you appreciate the craftsmanship that goes behind yeah. crafting, even if yeah. it's just a, a fight sequence. Yes. Like, yeah. Play with the angles, yeah. and even if it's just uh, the way you incorporate, like, uh, for instance, a uh, uh, 3D bullet, yes, mm, yes, you know, into a to scene. be able just to slow that to where the eyes can be able to, you know, see right. and digest what uh, you're seeing. Like, I think it's just a, it's a very good space to be. And remember, what the 3D does or the compositing does is just to make the shot interesting. Absolutely. There are things you cannot get on set. Yeah, it enhances the Yeah, uh, the, the, the camera cannot, can only, you know, when you have a, um, a cloudy day, mm -hmm. the sky is blown, everything is white. It's not a very good image. And every cinematographer will tell you that uh, mm -hmm. that's a very, you know, that kind of an image is not very pleasing. Yeah. But I'm what sure. what uh, compositor will do, it will just uh, more, more like, Fine-tuning, you know, you can, even if you can replace the sky, sky replacement extension. Yeah, that now that me that image on screens make it so uh, believable. It makes it so interesting to watch and Absolutely. keeps you moving. Yeah, it, it makes people get glued to what you film. Absolutely, and then yeah. also for you as a compositor, if uh, for instance we we're shooting this scene right here, and then behind you there's a pane of glass. Yeah. What if I want to replace that? What yes. if I want to put, put put a billboard there? And this is where now for you compositing comes in. Yes, and yeah. then you understand okay, what was what was the camera angle to yeah. understand how the perspective is it going to be, you know, sort of like uh, angle this way? What yeah. was the camera? How high was the camera? Yeah. And these are interesting things. And interestingly enough, even back in the you know the thirties and forties, guys like Charlie Chaplin, yes. you know, Buster Keaton. Yes. They already understood, you know, these things, and they had what, they, what we call matte painting. Mm. So they could, you know, but they could trick the camera by actually putting, you know, uh, something here on the edge where it's actually a painting. But then the way they painted it would look like something What's completely that? different. Whether yep. it was a, a train coming through yeah. through the scene, yeah. and it was just so amazing. Without technology, they were able to achieve to all that, those yeah. scenes. But now with uh, Things like Nuke, you know, uh, Maya. Yeah. It, it's amazing what you can do. 
And then uh, let's let's segue into uh, now the same vein of uh, uh, what you're doing with uh, 3D compositing now AI, right? Mm -hmm. AI is coming into the scene, into the cinematography. Where do you guys stand on that? Let me start with you, uh, Raz. I think my job is still secure. I don't know about robots. <laughs> 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 I don't know about robots, <laughs> 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 I think, I think uh, AI is going to make uh, the projects much more cheaper and, <laughs> right. and easier to to bring to life. So for me, I'm, I'm just obsessed with finding interesting stories or, and I, or ideas and bringing them to life. And so uh, the better they come to life, the faster they come to life, the easier they come to life, the better. And I think um, definitely AI is going to help with that. Um, it's going to help us do things that folks like many folks in this southern hemisphere maybe don't have the budgets or right. the equipment mm -hmm. to do, so it's going to make that easier. Um, so now it's going to be about your story. How strong is your story? Mm, uh, well said, so, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty excited for AI, uh, but also I'm, I'm deeply aware of all the... Um, the ramifications, the ramifications of that. Right. Uh, people losing their jobs mm -hmm. or, or the security elements of that. And, 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 you know, I think AI still has a lot of work to do when it comes to, like, for example, uh, black people, black experiences, um, and so I'm very excited. At the same time, I'm a bit cautious, and I'm, but I'm, I want it to, I want it to succeed. I want it to win. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely for it. I, uh, we have an, we have within our organization, we have an EI uh, officer, mm -hmm. AI officer, mm -hmm. and uh, that's Paul. Paul is a bit off. Frame, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, Paul, Paul is the encyclopedia of AI. Okay, so, he, he's, so we we gotta have Paul and oh Open man. Door Podcast oh, to yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. to to do a deep dive into the AI world because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, of course, AI is here to stay, and those who don't want to basically adopt AI will be left behind, mm -hmm. point blank. Mm -hmm. So you gotta you know you gotta uh, swim or sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've been uh, we are currently putting together. We also have a magazine. Actually, the way we started was through magazine, and then we transitioned into documentary, a magazine, film, and so like is, a magazine, digital is, print magazine. Okay, oh, that is old school, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you would be surprised though by how many people still want to get a copy of a, a co magazine, like a physical copy. Yeah, or, or, right? even digital. People to this day, we still get people you'd consider high end reaching out and asking if they could be in the magazine. Oh wow! Uh, people, okay. people have twenty x more rich than we do, but they don't have that. <laughs> platform of a magazine so there's there's a there's a there's still a there's still a need for a platform for, yeah. for magazines for newspapers for right. you can't replace the new york times as much as you might say it's an old da, da, da. right you find all your things on twitter and what but when new york times writes it when Forbes magazine does when that's right billboard times when right. billboard is there mm, true true when top is there when you're on top you know <laughs> yeah you made it. <laughs> so going back to AI so we, we, we put in together uh, our 18th issue it's gonna be uh, about it's gonna be on the state of podcasting in Africa actually mm. so we are oh. we are co um, producing it with an organization called Afripods right um, Afripods it's a really, really cool platform with a mission of creating the largest uh, library of African audio stories. Nice. So, um, very, very cool. So we're working with them to put together this magazine issue around podcasting in Africa. And so Paul, our AI guy, mm. call him AI guy. guru, uh, AI guru. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's been helping, he's, he's been writing all these things in the AI system and generating pictures that match the stories, the stories and whatnot, and it's, it's really interesting to see. So, Excellent, yeah, yeah. Well, I see again, see a guy like Paul. He understands the power of AI and yeah, how yeah. we could utilize it to enhance. It's not going to replace storytellers, you know. At the end of the day, yeah. like you said, you your your job is secure as a producer. You can't tell the AI, hey, go and produce this Produces. film, right? I <laughs> say, uh, dude, I don't have legs, all right? I mean, a computer. <laughs> I can't do anything that you do. I mean, even, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, Rob as well, for you, for your job, mm -hmm. even a for AI, it's 
it still requires human input. Yeah. Without yeah. the proper input, you you know, again, it's a messy. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's a jumble mess. Yeah. So so for you, uh, for you, Rob, what do you where do you stand on AI? What is your stance? I, I'm not worried. Just like Russ, I'm not worried about the job. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm I'm excited for it actually. Happy to hear that. What AI does, it does, uh, it makes your work easy and better. You just need to understand it. Yeah. Yeah, right now we are still using AI. Uh, the, the latest version of Premiere, mm -hmm. they included that, uh, is it called audio mix or sound, sound mix? Right. I think, where it can automatically change uh, the, the sound. The length, of, the length uh, of, your, of your audio track. Yes. That is dope. And uh, before that, or the other, the previous versions of uh, Premiere, what we used to do, we used to look for a beat, a key, <laughs> where the beat goes so down. So I could loop yes. uh, without uh, yeah. jumping to ah, the it next. It was the most boring part of you know editing sound. Yeah. And you try to make sure that it is seamless. Right. You know? But now with the uh, AI, it, it's not perfect, but mm. it makes it easier and, right. and better. And there's still, there's still more that's coming where you can be able to animate stuff. There's, there's something you're telling me about, you know, you shoot yourself right. and uh, because you, you cannot do rigging. Right. It, it so you like take the, the actual video footage yes. and you turn it into a, 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 a rig, like basically a skeleton. So you can now rig with other, you know, shading, different yeah, character yeah. models and stuff like that. And, and also auto, uh, autopod. Yeah. Right. That cuts all your camera yeah, angles. Like yes, that is yes, also that is yes, an amazing yes. feature. Yes. But I think it's a plugin. Actually, it's not uh, created by Adobe. Mm. It's a plugin for Premiere Pro where you could sh be shooting with three cameras, whatever, how many cameras. Yeah. So you feed the footage. And then, just and then yeah. So when I'm talking, mm. it knows to cut to me. When yeah. you talk, it knows to cut to you, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. So it's something that would take you six hours to actually put the first assembly together. Mm. It literally takes you minutes mm. to do it, and it does it in real time, and it's phenomenal. I love that. Yeah. Mm. I don't know what people need to know about AI. I, I don't. This uh, this is debatable. Um, it uses something like, uh, let's say, mathematical calculation or arithmetics. It doesn't think. Mm -hmm. But for us, we think. That's right. You know. Yeah. So AI doesn't think. People yeah. need to know that. Mm -hmm. Not yet. <laughs> it doesn't think. <laughs> so everything it does, you have to come and fine tune it and yeah. make it better. Even if you tell, uh, like, if you go to chat GPT right now and say, you know, write me a script, mm -hmm. uh, two minutes or three minutes, it'll do it in, a par in about seconds. Yeah. Something that you cannot do. Right. But your input to that script is what will make the difference. That's right. You know. This so is usually you have to go in and tweak it to, yeah. you know, to make it make sense. So it's just a conduit, but yeah. you need to put your creative juice in and make everything. Better. I agree. And then yeah. too, you know, I've experimented a lot with, uh, Actually, pretty much all the, the different iterations, whether it's ChatGPT, like 3.5, mm -hmm. I think, 4, ChatGPT 4, also Bard from mm -hmm. Google, also Bing AI, mm -hmm. uh, which also, and they, they each have their strong points and their yeah. weaknesses. Yeah. And I, I experimented, you know, I try sometimes the same prompt with different, you know, all three uh, platforms, mm -hmm. and you get widely different sort of like you know i mean the 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 bulk of the information is still there the mm. meaning of the information but there there's there are different it's almost like uh different voices mm. telling the same story yeah, yeah. and and uh, i kind of i kind of like that and mm. also uh, again remember garbage in garbage out yes what if, you feed but you feed the ai is what you'll give that's you what you're gonna yeah. get out so yeah. again you got to be specific about your prompts and also gener you know generating image generating like uh, leonardo ai mm. I mess with that also a little bit. And of course, there were a lot of tools still. And remember, this thing was released in April. Yeah. Right. And already, uh, Chat GPT is everybody from your grandma yeah. to your, you know, <laughs> to your little nephew. Yeah. Everybody's talking about Chat GPT. And I'm very excited. I'm very, it's very uh, uh, refreshing to see such a, such a, a revolution happening in mm -hmm. real time. And now, now in the context of, um, uh, the the African context. Now, where do we stand on AI? Are we consumers or are we actually contributing to the whole ecosystem? Do you see what I mean? Mm. Yeah. What are we doing to to uh, to basically make sure we have a stake 
we have a we have a skin in the game. We have a stake in in in, in the whole, in the whole thing. Are we just consuming it or are we contributing to the whole system? What do you guys think? Hmm. Well, um, AI. What's the mother company of AI? Uh, Open AI. Open AI. Yeah. You know, these are kind of like California-based startups and whatnot. Um, so for th for the most part, you could say we we are. Well, I guess for the for most of the continents, you could say they are consuming. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a very new. It's still a very new. Uh, platform and, and and technology, but I think there's opportunities for us to 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 contribute. Um, okay. I I know from my previous we did a documentary actually, uh, 2018 around science in Africa, um, and one of the fellows that we met, mm -hmm. uh, a fellow called Mustafa Sise, I should uh, people should check him out. Right. Very very smart guy. He was in charge of uh, I think either Google or Facebook AI. Um, in Paris, mm -hmm. and then he, he became a bit disappointed because he would go to all these AI festivals and it would just be a bunch of middle-aged white guys talking about uh, the, using AI to solve these problems that he didn't really think existed. And so he was like, we are, where I'm coming from have very, very serious uh, problems, problems right. that we could actually use this technology to solve. And so he kind of left his job there moved back to the continent, studied at, um, an institute around artificial intelligence. Um, Where is he? Is he in Ghana? He's based or? in Ghana. All right. It's the African Institute for Artificial Intelligence, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so they're sort of like building models that will teach AI to, 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 do, to even do basic things as face like recognition of people of melanin faces. You know, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm it glad was, you it said was, that, it yeah. Was, it was still there. <laughs> yeah. And so it would, it would actually be we need to follow up and see where he's at and where that's at. But so, to answer your question, I think we're still we are consuming now uh, because everyone is trying to catch up with the technology. But mm -hmm. there will definitely be opportunities for for the continent uh, to to contribute to, to contribute. The, yeah, because I think one thing uh, very interesting you you mentioned, and it, this this is not the first time that we're facing such a problem. Mm -hmm. Even as uh, as far back as I would say the '90s and the early 2000s, when cameras started in, you know, basically implementing autofocus, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it was impossible to <laughs> autofocus on this. <laughs> like the camera was like, uh, "What am I looking I'm at?" Confused. Uh, yeah. I think <laughs> Robert still has the issues with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You see? That's why he's buying the camera. <laughs> and it, yeah, he was like, yo, it, it'll be so much easier. Just, it, I'm sure these scientists, whoever, you know, you knew a couple of black people. Get a sample, you know, of everybody. And of course now, <laughs> things are starting. And it's the same thing with a AI. In a lot of situations, again, fast forward to facial recognition. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened again. Where, you know, facial recognition, sometimes, you know, they'd be like, uh, no, sorry, there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't see anything because they were, they didn't mm -hmm. know melanin. Yeah. And then same thing, and then not just, I mean, I'm not being, you know, sort of like, uh, uh, you know, I'm not beating them over the head with a stick because, yeah. you know, they simply didn't, that wasn't a priority for the developers, for the scientists who developed such devices. And it was the same thing the Asian community faced when you know for iris scan when you know they they would look at the camera and then the air would say yo open your eyes you know and it was like but my eyes are open <laughs> 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 oh my yeah terrible. exactly <laughs> so there was that you know terrible. yeah so that was terrible so, so again you know and i could go as far back as the 90s when uh johnson and johnson you know when they they created you know the band-aid right the plaster when you have a cut you mm -hmm. put it on your finger and then they would systematically call it flesh color so we were like oh, what is <laughs> or, yeah or skin color you know? <laughs> but there's only one color and it's usually this this color mm -hmm. so now there was a whole hoopla about it and then they started making different shades of mm -hmm. that way you know it can match yeah. the, mm -hmm. the skin tone mm -hmm. and it's sort of like the same thing and, and this is where also, uh, me in terms of also trying to contribute to the you know to the AI race, we are, me and a, a partner of mine, we're actually writing certain certain things 
to to uh, to facilitate certain tasks, to, to make certain things easier. I can't really talk about it right now, but there are certain things. We're training a model as well to for researchers to be able to to uh, do certain things with ease, but in the African context, mm. right? And then there are other models also, for instance, to feed the AI, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, topographical maps, mm. right? And mm. then say, th this is the elevation, th this was the average rainfall for the past decade, this is the average rainfall that's predicted for the next, you know, decade. Mm. Now, do show me a model where wh where it's most likely to be flooded, Whoa. which month of the year, yeah. where is it most likely to, to there's most likely to be drought, mm -hmm. so we can make plans. Even you know the rainy season now it will allow a lot of communities the rainy season to create dams or to collect that rainwater because mm -hmm. once that rainwater is gone, it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. But if you collect it, mm -hmm. yeah. what happens it's now, gone. you can prepare mm -hmm. for, the, for the drought. Mm -hmm. Now also where it's more prone to flooding, mm -hmm. you can say, you know what, such and such month, it's prone to flooding, so let's do something. Let's create a levee. Let's build levees mm -hmm. uh, like uh, sluice gates, yeah. mm -hmm. again, where we could collect these waters. So AI could fix all these problems. Yeah. But then, uh, again, maybe it's a governmental thing, maybe it's a private thing. So, you know, because I'm thinking of all these, these solutions mm -hmm. where we could actually uh, contribute within the context of, uh, you know what I mean, of the, the continent to say, mm -hmm. okay, are farmers going to benefit from it? Yeah. Are certain residential areas where people, you know, places get flooded? I mean, mm -hmm. I think uh, the last flood that happened here in, in, in Kenya is... Uh, you know, so some houses were washed away. You know, pe people died. Mm -hmm. That could all be uh, be avoided. Mm -hmm. Could be solved with, with with AI. So we have to think about it in terms of, of course, for us the creatives. I mean, we're thinking selfishly because, mm -hmm. well, you know, uh, Premier Pro can cut this yeah. this clip in three seconds. <laughs> yeah. But there are real life situations where you know uh, it could be life changing situation where not just for uh, you know our little. Uh, corner of uh, you know the creative sector mm. but uh, the community at large but also uh, you know things that will benefit you know humanity and, and, and you know not just here but if you imagine if you develop uh, an API for for the you know connected to the AI where you could solve the same problem you could solve here you could solve it in, in Argentina or in you know in Cambodia mm -hmm. I mean this is this is something that, that could be massive for the world not just for you know, for for Kenya or yeah. Tanzania or yeah. places like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so yeah. So AI. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Ask me. Well, let's go back a bit. What mm -hmm. are you working on uh, this day? What's what's keeping you busy? Uh wow. Where do I start? I mean, she's not she's interviewing me. And my, you know, <laughs> just done the show. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, That's my show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is a takeover. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you. Uh, a few things actually. Uh, one one project, I mean, unrelated to uh, the, the to uh, the creative sector, it's, it's an AI project mm -hmm. that that I'm working on. Again, it's it's in its infancy. I have I have a working prototype. It's it's working. I've tested it with a nice. few people, and they're already ready to sign up and mm -hmm. say, "Hey, we'll take our money. Where do we sign up?" Mm -hmm. So that's pending. Still working on that. There's a couple other things. There's a service based system that I'm working on as well. But uh, as far as far as creatively, uh, here at the studio H and M Studios, we we got five podcasts in, in production right now. Um, basically, one on mental wellness, yeah. one on boxing, one uh, on DJs and entertainment the entertainment scene in in Kenya, one on uh, stolen African, which is my trip across Africa. So that uh, we're planning, you know, for twenty twenty five now. Wow. to hit the road so that's happening and then the fifth podcast is um uh what's the fifth podcast i'm missing yeah right here open door. you're on it oh, open yeah. door podcast open and remember door. guys this is odp open door podcast this is the ODP. podcast where anybody can walk in and talk about anything and everything of course within reason all right so <laughs> you never know who's going to be behind the door next time it, it might be paul yeah it might be Ezo, you know, Ezo sitting there behind the camera, all right? It might be anybody, you, you, you never know. So once you hear knock, knock, 
the door opens up, the conversations are open, and we can talk about anything and everything. So that's what I've been working on, uh, my dear brother Ross. You know, and uh, uh, you know, I'm like I'm like water. I'm always forever. Flowing. Want everything, John. Mm -hmm. Want everything. Mm -hmm. Want everything. Well, you know what though? This is just not enough hours in a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have a 72-hour day. You know what I mean? And then, of course, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we still work out. And I'm happy to say, Robert joined us. Yeah. For, uh, yes. Yeah. Two sessions already. Yes. Two right. sessions. Yeah. yeah. Did he collapse? No. Really? He actually, yeah. No. He actually came. He wow. delivered. You know, yeah. we have, uh, have, uh, we have, uh, we went to uh, while we are in Botswana. We almost lost him. How? He went up a hill and he came back. <laughs> Please ask this question. When I was doing that, where was Russ? When I was on top of the hill, where was Russ? Was he in a helicopter or <laughs> in the car? <laughs> Russ refused to climb. <laughs> he was like, let me just wait for you guys here. <laughs> so he was at base camp. Yeah, yeah. they're just chilling, waiting for guys sure to go all the way out and come down. <laughs> Somebody had to take care of everything, you know? I had, yeah. I had the gimbal, I had the camera, oh lens, my God. and I went all the way to the top. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. Back. And that's the two hour thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you gotta be in shape. But see, there's one thing we're gonna do though with the group here, because we we you know we exercise Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yesterday I had to cancel. Yeah, you saw the message. Right, yeah. yeah, I had some meetings yesterday. Uh, Mondays we do yoga. Wednesdays more calisthenics, and then Fridays we go all out, like yeah. military well, style. Now we have big really? tires. We do tire flips, all that wow. type of stuff. Uh, he hasn't showed up for that one, but <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Ah. No, but he, he's gonna be there. He's gonna be on Friday. Yeah. Put up there. This, this Friday is gonna be yeah. there. But uh, but um, uh, yeah, what we're trying to do, or what we're going to do, we actually we've done it. Uh, we've done it a couple of years ago. Is basically go uh, uh, gong hills. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, hiking. Nice. Hiking and gong hills. But when? we do all seven. It's usually it usually happens on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. But next time we go, well, I'll let you. I like know. the I like uh, the way you're asking come. when. I'll be there. I'll yeah. be there. Yeah, you you uh, better. I've just <laughs> run the uh, Nairobi marathon this this Sunday. Oh, you did. You yes, did it. Yes, yes, oh wow. Yes. How long? Did the six k or the ten k? Wow. Nice. It's tough, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you train for it? Yeah, I did. I did. I okay. Did. Yeah, Good. I did. It is. It's a great thing, man. It's, yeah. it's great. It's great. Yeah. I'm, still, I'm still walking very funny, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a good feeling. So I, w when did you hit your second wind? Because uh, in the beginning, your heart is going crazy. And then yeah. how, how, how long, how far along were you till you hit your second wind? I think four, fourth kilometer, three. On the third one, uh, once, once, the once I looked in front and I couldn't see the end, I was like, I guess I gotta do this. That's it. Yeah. You, you can't know. go back now. You can't go it's back. Like back. You know, <laughs> on the expressway, there's only this, the other way back is on the other side. So right. You, know, you gotta go, go all, all the way around. <laughs> yeah, all the way around. In fact, it was Saturday night. I was uh, I was shooting at K1. You know that club, K1? Yeah. Mm. So we were shooting something. It was uh, International Reggae Day. Oh. And then they had a thing over there. So, you know, a buddy of mine he invited me to go help him shoot some stuff. And then on the way back, they actually mm. the, they had already yeah. closed yeah. the the, 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 yeah. the, the, the on ramp to the yeah. highway. So so we had to go all the way around. So you were there. I yes, guess. I was there. I was, what time did I you was, get there? I was lucky to be on the good side of traffic this time around. Nice. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get there at uh, eight thirty. Okay. Eight thirty. Right. Um, the ten k started at nine. Right. Yeah, and I and I did ten k in one in one hour fifteen minutes. Oh, nice! Not bad for uh, somebody that hasn't run in. We, we have we have to do the hill because I don't believe Russ. Okay. I don't think he went that okay. far. So we All have right. to. Do, yeah, we so have to, yeah. We have to be there to see. So okay, yeah. so yeah. then uh, yeah, we'll put some uh, we'll put a couple of shillings on oh, the table. Yeah, yeah. See yeah. who wins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But remember, we're doing all seven hills, right? Oh, that's okay. Yeah. 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 So that means that means seven's fourteen though. Seven to go, seven to come back. Yes. Damn. Yeah. yeah, you have to go and come back. Seven to go and seven to come back. If Robert can make it, definitely. Are you? Like, oh, there you go. Shots fired. But see now, because you see, last time we went, actually, no, I think one of the second to last time we went, a lot of guys went to the other side and they took him a tattoo back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. I'm not doing this. <laughs> really? I'm like, yo, that's yeah. cheating, man. You should tell people to leave their it's money, it's wallet, it's and yeah. phone. Exactly. At the base, at the beginning. Confiscate Then when everything. you come back, yes. So you don't have fare, <laughs> you don't have phone. You got to come back here. What's, what's that uh, military trick where they burn the, the boat? 
Oh yeah, right. They burned the bridge, yeah. right there. Burned the bridge, yeah. Right. yeah. No going back. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do, man. You know, so I think it's gonna be uh, good for. I mean, it's it's a good. It's a good team bonding thing also. You know, you go there and then you encourage each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you, uh, if you're out of breath, then, mm -hmm. you know, it's, Rob is going to carry you on his back. It's not yeah, a problem. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, John, yeah. what was your... Because I, I always admire how much uh, you are into lifestyle and how, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. what was your aha moment? Like, the, how did you get into this? How did you build uh, your life? It's really? always been there. The funny thing is I can't, I can't even pinpoint an aha moment per se. Because uh, even growing up, you know, I was always, I mean, even um, my first book I published about, you know, wellness and fitness and stuff like that. Um, I think it came, it came about because everybody was always asking me, so how do you, you know, how, what do you, how do you do this? How do you stay in shape? How da, 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 da. Mm. So I'm like, let me just put it in the book. And that way, you know, you want to know about it? Here's a copy of the book. Yeah. I'll pick up a copy of the book. But for me, it was, I think it started uh, at home. Because, mm -hmm. you know, my, my dad, although he wasn't military, but he, he, he ruled the house like it was, you know, like military. Yes, so Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I say, yes, sir. You know, mm -hmm. just sit up straight. You know what I mean? All that type of stuff. Completed. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But for, for him also, it was, uh, you know, there was always like a bowl of uh, fruit. If you wanted a snack, eat an apple, eat a banana, you know what I mean? Not eat. And no, no <laughs> sweets either, no candy, you know what I mean? So there was, there was always that. It was always wholesome, you know, uh, good, healthy food. And mm -hmm. also, I, I never really ascribed to going to a gym to lift weights, to do different things. It was always organic. It was always playing sports. Mm -hmm going, you know, swimming, going, you know, skating, doing different things, going skiing, all, all this type of activities, swimming, all the type of, you know, stuff, even surfing later on. Mm. That's pretty much what I, that's my philosophy. And even as far back as, you know, when I was, you know, growing up, let's say four or five years old, I could never eat breakfast. Like my system was just not built like that. Uh, you know, they would try to force me to eat breakfast and I would just throw up mess up my uniform and then eventually they're like you know what just leave him alone mm. and then for for a long time i did a uh, one meal a day and then to to this day now mm. whenever i feel like my system is kind of like backed up i go back to one meal a day and if i feel like i'm really not feeling well i do i do a fast maybe a 24-hour fast the last fast i did was uh last month you know, there was a big flu going around, right? Mm. There was a big bug going on. So I caught it. I got sick. Mm. Once I recovered, my stomach was really messed up. Like, you know, I can whatever I ate, it didn't. I couldn't keep it down. It just went right through me. So I did a three-day fast. Three-day uh, dry fast. That means no food, no water at all. Zero water, zero food for three mm. days. So Still whatever, eat. yeah, whatever bug was in there. I know. Dead. You'll uh, die, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is you can do it. But I, you, this is not something I recommend you jump <laughs> into. You know, you build up to it. Mm. Like you do maybe a 16-8. Like, you know, when you wake up, you wait 16 hours, right? From the time, you know, from your last meal to the next meal, 16 hours, and you have eight-hour window mm. to eat all your calories. Or you do an 18-6. Mm -hmm. See? That means your first meal could be at 12 or 1 or 2 p.m. And then you don't eat uh, the next day, you know what I mean? You eat again. Um, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then once you get used to that, then you do a 24 hour. Then you do a 36 hour. You push, you keep pushing the boundary. Mm -hmm. And then you do a 72 hour. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you're good. Yeah. I've done five days of dry fast. That I means five days, no water, no food at all. Just, so it's, just it's, chill. It's, it's useless capturing John and uh, not giving him food. <laughs> he's, he's not exactly. A, he's yeah. not yeah. a good. Uh, We're yeah. gonna starve you to death. <laughs> he's not a good yeah, yeah, I'm like sure. Uh, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is my ground. Uh, yeah, uh, you know what I mean. So that that's that's sort of like you know my my lifestyle, and then you know exercise becomes like if I don't do anything, even here. I mean, you see, you can't. It's off camera now. You know, I have my, my kettlebell, I have my dumbbells, I have all my stuff here. You know, sometimes if I'm waiting here and I'm, I, you know, I'm waiting to something is, is rendering, I just basically uh, just drop, do a few push-ups, drop my kettlebell, do a couple of things, you know, do some bicep curls, 
mm. and then get your blood flowing and then just keep it moving man so for me it's you know it's a it's a way of life mm -hmm. it's not a it's not something that i do on the weekend or something that i do when i have time mm. And, and when people say, nah, I don't have time to exercise, I'm like, that's yeah. bullshit. Yeah. If you have an hour to watch a Netflix special, you have, an, you have 15 yeah. minutes to exercise. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. You don't really need that much time. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad my brother here joined us. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. 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 I see what you guys are doing. Yeah. So now we're, yeah. So now we're not pointing finger. We're not pointing we're finger. We're not pointing Right? <laughs> <laughs> but we're still waiting for some people. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. true, sure. Yeah. Waiting for some people to show up. <laughs> yeah. That's the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we waiting for some people. I think they, they got the message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Hey, yeah. listen, Caribou, anytime, man, you know? And then what, really I, nice what I suggest, though, mm. come on a Monday first. Don't yeah. come on a Friday. That's, that's what John has been telling me. Okay. Every time I want to come on Friday, it's like, no, no please. Rob, don't. I address you, please come on Monday. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> He says say so that people can think he actually wanted to come on a Friday. Yeah, actually, I he did. Like, yeah, I, I think like, I, I, today, I, think I believe, believe it. Yeah. I believe it because he was like, no, 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 please uh, don't. Because I've had situations where this is one guy, you know, and I love telling this story. I mean, he's ex-military and everything. You know, I'm like, listen, uh, uh, you want to come? It's come on a Monday. It's like, please. It's like, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm ex, you yeah. know, military. Yeah. I know, and I'm like, I've done this. yeah, I've done yeah. this. I'm right. that guy. Right, cool. Okay. okay. There's this thing we used to do. This is uh, this is when I was in Asia. Is you know wherever I live, I start a, an exercise group, right? Mm. So we used to. Uh, there's this building. It's like it's a 12 story building. So we used to. Uh, there there are two staircases, one in the front and then one towards the back. So we used to actually go up the stairs in the front, like full uh, knees up, do, 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 mm. stairs, 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 and then walk and then go all the way down and then come back. We do that three rounds, right? But then I, I implemented you know, like fireman's carry. You know what a fireman's carry is? So basically we match two people together like almost equal weight. Mm -hmm. So one flight of stairs, you carry your partner over your shoulder and then you switch. You just carries mm -hmm. you over your shoulder and then you go. It's not like a leisurely kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, do, 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 up and then switch. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, dude, please don't come on a Friday. So he came. I'm like, bro, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Dude, yeah, I'm ex-military. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm like, all right, cool, <laughs> bro. Three flights of stairs. He was like, okay, okay. I'm like, let's go. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but then at e on each uh, floor, on each uh, landing, there's a, there's a garbage can. You know, third third uh, landing, dude was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro. I warned you. <laughs> I warned you, bro. He was like, man, I, 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 I don't know what happened. I'm like, I know exactly what happened. You know, I, you, you, know you came on a Friday. Mm, That's what happened. Yeah, he was. Then he was like, "Bro, respect," because uh, yeah. So from that day forward, now he understood what I was he talking listens. about. He listened. Yeah, because if he if he don't, uh, trust me. Even uh, Mark, Mark Denver. Yeah. First time he joined us, yeah. uh, he was in the bushes over there. <laughs> <laughs> that was on a Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ah, yeah. be, that's me. We'll never hear the end of it. Uh, <laughs> yo. Yeah. So definitely not coming on a Friday. Now we'll make sure Paul comes with the camera. Okay, yeah. one camera. And then keep follow Raz. Yeah. Paul, Paul is my guy. Uh, Me and Paul have been together for yeah. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is always on my side. <laughs> Be short, I'm telling you, Paul yeah. will, will shoot it and then it'll bootleg it and say, hey, you want the AI, footage? Yeah. You're going to put some things on the AI. <laughs> <laughs> you want the footage? Yeah. I need 100K. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to release it. I have, a few, I have a few footage of him too, so... Oh, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. There you go. Blackmail material. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, fellas. Uh, yeah, so uh, Open Door Podcast. So we have Ras in the building, representing the 254, you know, Tap Creatives. Mm -hmm. We got Rob in the building, representing Tap Creatives and... Kofilamu Pictures. Kofilamu Pictures. Mm -hmm. So guys, uh, why don't you plug uh, your socials and, you know, where people can reach you. And then, you know, if they want to send you a bag of money, where should they do that? I got money. Yeah. Um, do I gotta give out like my KCB back? Pesa. Two more way in my Pesa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all that. So go ahead, Raz. So where can people reach you? Your socials, you know, uh, IG, Twitter. Uh, IG at Tap Magazine, um, Twitter at, at Tap underscore Magazine. And uh, if you if you really have some creative ideas, we're always looking for people to collaborate with. 
you can reach at you can reach us at hello at top mag top mag online dot com. Nice. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll have we'll put all that in the description below. So mm -hmm. you know, don't worry, it'll it'll be all there. So mm -hmm. Rob, go ahead, man. Where can people uh, reach you and send you a ton of money? Everything is uh, to fill out pictures. Um, in case you want to send uh, any any creative stuff like uh, Ross said, you just info at the film pictures. That's it. Nice, yeah. cool. So it'll all be in the description below. So once again, ODP Open Door Podcast, open doors, open minds, and you never know who's going to be behind the door next. So keep it locked. This is OG signing off. Booyah. Yeah. <laughs>